blue. Okay, it's 10 degrees outside, and I go outside a lot because I like to, and I smoke, and I smoke outside, and I don't like being cold. So, as I look uh, for the rest of the week, it doesn't look like it's going to be very fun for me because I don't like cold, and I live in Wisconsin. So I decided I'll see what other property I can find. And I wanted cheap property. So for example, here's this little house that's on eBay. That's a foreclosure in Pennsylvania, which actually is cold right now. But um, I found it kind of fascinating because I was looking around the neighborhood there. I was reading all this information about it. And I got the address. And then I... Um, right here in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. And then I decided to look at the Google map of it. Because this is a picture of where the property is at right here. And I wanted to get a better view of it. This is still on the eBay site. So on the Google map, here it is. This is uh, just a map. And you can get closer. This is a picture of the street view which I don't really need, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, where'd it go? <gasps> oh, so that made me get rid of it. Let's stop for a minute and go back. Okay, so I just went backwards on this arrow here until this, this showed up again. So then we're going to get closer. And then I want to see the Earth. Alright, so then I can go down. And I love this about Google because I can go right down. The, the building is right here. I can see it doesn't have hardly any backyard if it does at all. But it's still a cute little place. And the city is a really cute little town. And what amazed me is this. Which is all this woods right next to this town. That's amazing to me. Like, if we go back down, and I get onto the street with this little person that I love, I'm all of a sudden on the street. Here's the building. And I went all around the neighborhood, and I got to see there's a lot of families that live there, it looks like. And if I go up farther... There's this huge amount of woods that amaze me because when we go back out, see, this is a lot of woods. So what I did that I found really fascinating was I just backed up and backed up and backed up. And this I love. It's like you're on a <clears throat> you're astral traveling. Backed up. And then now I can get rid of this. So we can see a better view. And all of a sudden, there's the whole earth. And look at this. This is the North Pole up around in here. Now this is what amazed me. If I keep going. And I turn the earth. <laughs> There's the Milky Way and the sun. And I'm sure many of you already know this. And many of you have already done this. But um, I remember the first time I did something like this. It totally freaked me out. Because the earth is just like suspended in space. you know. And if you get closer. Then the rest of it kind of goes away. But go back out. I love it. But so then I started wondering where is this being photographed from? If, if this is a photograph or a composite, how do they do this? And I'm sure many, many of you know how they do it. So let's, let's, I want to move up and look at the, that's the Milky Way. 
and I can only go so far to look at it. You can't make it move like over here. I have to make the earth move. So where is this moon? And then that made me wonder if the satellite's on the moon, because watch what happens when the earth goes in front of the sun. The Milky Way gets lighter. Which would happen, how the lights would look if you were out in the dark. See? <laughs> so it's like an eclipse. So then, going back into the earth, into where the earth is, I love that you can see all these little spots in the ocean. I mean, look at that. So then, I'm always curious about the ocean. And I want to show you a spot that I found that really sparked my curiosity. <clears throat> and it might yours too. Okay, I'm going to go to the other map that I have. Okay, I didn't back out of this because I thought I might lose it. But here in this part of the ocean, see, there's one, two, three, four, five spots that are almost exactly the same size it looks like even though they're blurred out and I can't get it oh I can get closer these three are like spaced almost symmetrically and look how that looks all under there that looks like a square <laughs> like a building, a square building, um, or m maybe that's just what happens with the pixels when you're going where it's really deep. Um, but it's a, it amazes me, and you can see those three dots from quite a distance. It amazes me that they have these areas clear or somewhat clear, and then these other ones aren't. <laughs> so then what actually caught my eye with this at first, though, was this spot right here. Oh, my computer is running slow at the moment. This looks kind of like a face to me right here. Like an eye and a nose and a mouth. And it could even, it could be facing me or it could be looking sideways. With this being somewhat of a weird leg somewhat of headgear or just looking at me but here are some more of those little bumps which don't look the same as this over here I mean I, I know it's blurry so don't make comments about that but these areas don't seem to have little bumps like that underneath the blurriness so I'm wondering what is really the illusion here. And, you know, like how... <laughs> you know, it's like what's really going on underneath there. That's what we all wonder. But some of us do know. So then as I back up out of there... a beautiful planet. It's absolutely beautiful and the Milky Way. And I think now that's so beautiful. And there I am right down there. Right where that arrow is pointing. And it's dark and cold. I'm grateful for you and I'm here at your service. I just um, thought I'd show you one more thing. I um, decided to look at the RSOE and um, alert map. And when I go down to um, three hours ago, environmental pollution USA... And, of course, we all know about the protesters that have been protesting in North Dakota. 
And this is uh, Bella Forge Pipeline, Belfield, State of North Dakota. Let's look and see what it is. Uh, we'll go up here under description. A pipeline leak has spilled tens of thousands of gallons of crude oil into a North Dakota creek roughly two and a half hours from Cannonball, where protesters are camped out in opposition to the North Dakota Access Pipeline. Members of the Standing Rock Sioux and other tribes as well as environmentalists from around the country have fought the pipeline project on grounds that it crosses beneath a lake that provides drinking water to the Native Americans. Now, this is exactly what they, the protesters were talking about could happen, and the people that have been standing up for the pipeline are just like, no, it's safe. So this is amazing that this happened right now, and you can read more on it. I'll have the link. But, but let me go down to the bottom part of this where it says, the 32,000 gallon spill temporarily shut down water supplies in the downstream community of Glendive, Montana, after oil was detected in the city's water treatment system. True Cost operates at least three pipeline companies with a combined 1,648 miles of line in Montana, North Dakota, and Wyoming according to information the company submitted to federal regulators. Since 2006, the companies have reported 36 spills totaling 320,000 gallons of petroleum products, most of which was never recovered. Hmm. Okay, I'm on CNBC, and I just want to clarify what I read um, earlier. What I read was wrong. Um, or misconceiving. The pipeline spilt um, approximately 176,000 gallons of crude oil. Okay, so down here, which is the same article basically as what I was reading on the RSOE. Um, where I read was <sighs> Okay, let me stop this a minute. Okay, now the part that I had read was um, when this was from January 2015 pipeline break into the Yellowstone River, where the 32,000 gallon oil spill shut down the water supplies in the downstream community of Glendive. That wasn't this one that is being talked about right now. Right now, they've only recovered about 37,000 gallons of it. And they're saying um, it's going to take some time. Obviously, there will be some component of the cleanup that will go towards spring because um, workers have been averaging about 100 yards daily. Some of the oil remains trapped beneath the frozen creek. Okay, so that's just a clarification of what I was reading. But it's beginning to seem as though if we're not doing something like this, all the earth is going to be destroyed because people are greedy and stupid and we need water and air I mean just look it's just a little spot out in space in a vast space even though it seems really big it's not really that big and it's just floating there and if it if all life died on this little spot, look at all the billions and billions and billions of other places there are. It wouldn't even be noticed unless you believe in uh, spiritual connectiveness and then everything would notice it, but just like they are now. Sometimes we need something like this from Fragrant Heart. And this has a recording on it that you can just push right here and um, a lady will read the meditation to you, a guided meditation. When I no longer feel separated, I am connected to all that is. I am aligned with consciousness. It's interesting to do something like this when we're feeling um, grateful or when we're feeling overwhelmed. And I am grateful for you, and I am here at your service. Bye-bye.